come on in, pull up a chair and take a load off because today I'll be providing a bit of a how to play as well as my review of Watergate from Capstone Games. Will you be entertained by this card-driven tug of war between those looking to cover up the Watergate break-in and those looking to expose the cover-up? Or will you decry designer Matthias Kramer as a crook if you buy this game? Well, you're going to find out right after this. Howdy, 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 gang. Welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. As mentioned in the open, I'll be reviewing Watergate in just a moment. But first, I do want to thank everybody out there once again for all the kind thoughts and prayers they've sent my way regarding my recent triple bypass surgery. It's been six weeks since the surgery. I just wrapped up my first week of cardiovascular rehab. And the doctors and nurses all continue to say I am well ahead of the curve. So once again, thank you very much for those kind thoughts and prayers. They really do mean a lot. They really do. So today, I am going to share a bit of how to play, as well as my review of Watergate, which is from Capstone Games. It's designed by Matthias Kramer, with art provided by Clemens Franz and Alfred Victor Schulz. This game is for two players, ages 12 and up, plays around 30 to 60 minutes, does carry an MSRP of $34.95. Do you want to mention that the cover art that you see here is from the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition, which is what I've got. And the reason why I have that is because two days before I underwent my triple bypass surgery, my best friend Elliot Miller came and spent the afternoon with me in the hospital and he brought Watergate. He stopped at Barnes and Noble, picked it up and we played it four times that afternoon. So I will never forget this game. All right. So I've got it set up. So let's swing on over to the other camera because here we've got Watergate. And essentially what's going on here, one player is going to take on the role of the president and his cronies as they try to thwart the attempts of the editor and their journalist from exposing the cover-up, exposing the cover-up to the Watergate Hotel break-in. So one aspect of this game I actually like quite a bit is the fact that if you don't know much about Watergate, you're going to learn some things. Very, very cool. I always appreciate that. Now, this is a card-driven game. It's a little bit different than some card-driven games, mainly because most card-driven games have a combined deck. They have one central deck for the players to utilize. Each player here has their own deck. It's a 20-card deck, and you'll actually cull cards from the deck because many of the events that you can play will be removed. The card is removed from the game, so you're going to have a smaller and smaller deck as you go along. So let's talk a little bit about the components. The rule book, very nicely done. Some people taking a look at it will be like, whoa, man, that's a lot of pages in that rule book. It's not all rules, though. Uh, a lot of it is devoted to explaining what each of the cards represent. And there's also a history of Watergate in here as well. So as an example, it's talking about the conspirators, the informants, the journalist, and you'll see these cards as we go through. So here's here's a bit of the history of a third-rate burglary, the Watergate Hotel. So I do want to mention that uh, this artwork on the rule book, that is the artwork from the standard edition of the game. And as far as I understand, there is absolutely no difference between the standard edition and the Barnes & Noble edition outside of the cover art. So nicely presented rule book. There were, we had a couple of questions as we played, found the answers very easily in the rule book. So presentations very nicely done. Had no problems figuring out how to play this game. So what you're going to do is you're going to have evidence. So 
the editor player is looking to try to connect the trails here to the president. If they can connect two informants to the president, they win. The president player can win by momentum. Essentially, if they have five momentum tokens, they were able to finish out their second term and uh, there was no impeachment. And if you have the editor player, if they get five momentum tokens, then President Nixon is impeached. So those are the ways that you're going to go about trying to win. The editor player has a couple of ways to win. The Nixon player really, well, there's another way if it's impossible for, there's not enough momentum tokens for the editor player to get to the impeachment then yes, the Nixon player wins. All right, so kind of explain some of the things going on. So we, we've got the initiative. That's represented by this white cylinder. This is a track here. So we have the center is zero, and it goes one to five, one to five. This is the president and the committee for the re-election of the president, creep. And this is the editor. And in this case, the editor would no doubt be Ben Bradley of the Washington Post who's uh, utilizing their journalists to try to sway informants and gathering evidence. So we have initiative. Whoever has initiative is going to have five cards that turn, and the player who does not have initiative gets four cards. So what's going to happen is whoever has the initiative is going to play a card. They're going to be able to play that card as either a journalist, an event, or an event which gets you an informant. And I'll zoom in, you'll get a better look at these cards as well. So the editor player has journalists, the president player has conspirators. And essentially what these do is they give you an action and they stay in play. They, they get discarded, they're not removed from the game. So as an example, it's Ben Bradley, who I had just mentioned. So with these cards, you can either use the action portion here or you can use the numeric value up here. So the numeric value will allow you to move a token. That number of spaces towards you. Now, if at any time something enters the five spot on your side of the track, you automatically have it and there's no way that it can be pulled back. So there is a back and forth. There is a tug of war that goes on with the initiative as well as the momentum tokens. And momentum can be awarded each turn. So to kind of give you an example of what the president player is going to do every turn is they're going to reach into this draw bag where we have these evidence tokens. They're going to draw three. They're going to hide what color they are from the other player. So for an example here, we've got two yellow and one green. And these will get placed face down on the zero track. Or I should say zero spot on that track. Get those cards out of the way. And these are also moved by playing the numeric value on this card. So as the president, what you're trying to do is you're trying to keep evidence out of the hands of the editor and block paths to the president. As the editor, you're looking to gain evidence, which there are three colors, and some evidence actually does show two colors. And you're going to try to connect these informants to the president. Once again, you need to connect two of them to automatically win. But first thing you got to do is you got to recruit them. So as an example here, we've got Rosemary Woods, who the president also has an event that allows the president, as I throw that card, allows the president to secure the support of Rosemary Woods. 
this would provide the editor, uh, Rosemary Woods, as an informant. So what will happen is whoever's going to play this first is going to get that person on their side. So what happens is when you're recruiting, first of all, that person has to not be in play. They can't be out on the board here. So let's say as an example, where is she? There we go. So Rosemary Woods would go down there. This is considered to be the supply. And on these events, it says that they that person has to still be in the supply. They cannot be on the evidence board. So you would actually kind of keep these off to the side. So now this means that the editor can start tracing evidence to the president. Now, if the president player was able to secure that support, they would actually flip her over like so. And this now has kind of cut them off from starting to try to lay a string to the president from this section here. So it's important for both players to recruit. Problem is that the supporters or informants, regardless, you know, which side recruits them, they normally have a pretty high value card. And once again, once you recruit that person, that card is removed from play. Now, as an example here, let's say the editor recruited Rosemary Woods. This card is going to actually stay in the president's deck, but it can only be used as this. Okay, so as I mentioned, it's a tug of war. So you're going to be looking to try to score the initiative, try to score that momentum token, and be able to pull evidence and have it on your side of the board. So at the end of the round, after the player who has initiative has played five cards and the player who did not have initiative plays four cards, then whatever is on the sides is going to be awarded. Moving evidence is gonna be kind of different though. You can't just say, okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna move any old piece of evidence three. So as an example here, this is showing green and a three. So as the president, I already, I can look at any time once again to see what color evidence I have because they're face down. But if I wanna move evidence, I have to reveal the color. So as a president player, I would have to reveal that that green evidence is there and move it one, two, three. Now, if the editor player really wanted that evidence piece there, they would have to play a green card, or as an example, that's a wild card there, and they would need to move it back to their side on this track. Anything that's left in the middle, a zero, any evidence is gonna go back into the draw bag. A momentum token is not going to be awarded if the initiative is sitting on the zero, then the initiative is going to go to the player who did not have the initiative in that round, in that turn. So what's going to eventually happen here is you're going to score evidence. Let's say the president got that piece of evidence and the editor got these two pieces of evidence. So, and they've recruited Rosemary Woods. So they could play that right there. Because remember, they're trying to create a connection and they could play that right there. Let's say they had the initiative because they get to go first. If you have initiative, you get to place, you get to take your evidence, you get to place your evidence. Now the president, when he places evidence, he plays things like that. So that is face down and that is blocking that path to Nixon. Now, uh, there is the ability to remove evidence by way of a card, but it's rare. It's rarely gonna, gonna give you an opportunity to remove evidence. So essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna continue 
playing through the round until either the president has earned five momentum tokens and they win, they finish up their term, or the editor has gotten five momentum tokens and the president has been impeached, or you have three paths. Let's see, let's see. John Dean. There we go. We'll put John Dean right there. Let's say that. Of course, I'm looking for the different colors here. So that would be a path there. And then get another yellow here, just so you can see it. That would be a second path. So in a situation like this, the editor player would win. One last thing I do want to point out is when uh, you actually receive your evidence, it's the, the way the, the, the rounds kind of end are kind of strange. I mean, it takes a little getting used to. I don't mean to say strange. It just takes a little getting used to. So what will happen is once you're, you're ending the round and you've awarded momentum or maybe nobody got momentum, you're going to replace it with a new momentum token. And if you're placing evidence, if it has a number one on it like so, you're actually going to automatically move that one spot closer to your five. So it's going to start off on your side in the beginning of the next round. So in essence, that is how you play Watergate. Now let me zoom in a little bit so you can get a, a better look at some of the components here as well as the cards. Uh, component quality is pretty nice. I thought it was pretty nice. I have to jump up because the camera is actually kind of way up there. I'll just zoom all the way in. All right. So kind of give you an example. These are the supporters slash informants. There's seven of those. And then we've got the cards. So to kind of give you an idea. So these are the cards for the editor. So you're going to have the numeric value here for evidence or the cylinder. So it's basically tokens. And then you're going to have the action section. Now there are, like for an example, this is a reaction card. There are reaction cards that you can play when someone, the other player plays a card and it'll say it's a reaction. So we're going to have what the action section is. It's going to tell you once you play that and take that action, do you remove that card from play? And then we get some flavor text down on the bottom. Like I said, you'll be able to learn things about Watergate in this game. And that's pretty much it. Let's swing on over to the other camera because I'm going to share my final thoughts as well as provide a review score. I'm a big fan of card-driven games. I am a big fan of historical games. So you put history and card-driven together, I'm going to like it. I like Watergate quite a bit, although I do have a concern, which I will talk about in just a few moments. But I like the, the back and forth. I like the little tug of war struggle. I like the uh, connecting the, the evidence to the president and blocking the editor from pursuing certain avenues to the president as well. I think that's pretty cool. This is an excellent card-driven game to introduce people to card-driven games because this is a pretty light card-driven game. And once again, it's very easy to get into and learn how to play. So really, really dig that as well. The component quality is really nicely presented. So all in all, this is a really fine game. We enjoyed it. As I mentioned, we played it four times. Now, granted, I was in the hospital awaiting surgery, just kind of, you know, cooling my heels. 
But if it was a lousy game, I would not have played it four times. <laughs> but I also have to point out that I do think with a lot of repeated play, especially with the same players, that this will become kind of samey. That I don't feel that there's as much variance and variety as you would find in other card-driven games, mainly because each player is only really dealing with 20 cards. And they're going to call those cards out of their deck as they continue to play events as the cards. So I, I kind of feel that this isn't a game where you're going to sit there and say, well, you know, this is, the, this is the 50th time that Bob and I have played this game. I don't, I don't see that. Now, that doesn't make this not a game with a lot of replayability. There is replayability in this. All I'm saying is I... I don't picture this game like it's Twilight Struggle, right? Simply because there just aren't that many cards. But all in all, I really do like Watergate. So on a scale of 0 to 10, I give Watergate a very, very solid 8 out of 10. I certainly do recommend it. And I think, once again, it makes for a really nice introduction to card-driven games. All right, that is it for this time out. If you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do, ding that bell. It'll not only let you know when I upload videos such as this review, it'll also inform you when my live stream, The Gaming Gang Dispatch, airs right here on YouTube as I bring you the latest in tabletop gaming news and first looks at tabletop games. Of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more. You know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, here's hoping all of you get to enjoy plenty of great gaming with your own gang. Oh, you're still here. Well, while you're kicking it, how about subscribing to the Gaming Gang channel or seeing the latest episode of the Gaming Gang Dispatch or finding out what YouTube recommends you check out here at my channel. And of course, don't forget, get your geek on at thegaminggang.com.